Okay, I know that this is on my kitchen counter, but it is currently tropical storming outside. Uh, I'm near Tampa in Florida, so we're going to try to see if we can't do this right here on the workbench. Now, I'm going to set you down for a second. What I'm doing right now is I'm applying power to the Mega Squirt through a, a stimulator supply. There we go, and we're back. It's going to generate a difference report. I've made some changes to my tune. It's going to hit accept. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is you're going to go under your hood and you're going to put the distributor in just like Colin said. You're going to put the notch on the distributor to the notch in the block if it's a stock distributor. This will get you somewhere in the ballpark of where the distributor was set. Uh, with the stock ECU. It should be right at 10 degrees timing uh, before top dead center but it never really is. And then we're going to go into ignition options in the Mega Squirt. And we're going to change from use table to fix timing. I already have mine set to 20 degrees. That's what I suggest. I'm going to close this box and we're going to start the car or attempt to start it. If it doesn't start, wiggle the distributor until you can get the car to start. Once you get the car started, bring up ignition settings and bring up the trigger wizard. This big advanced degrees number here, that's physically what the Mega Squirt is commanding at that moment. It should say 20 degrees if you have your timing table set to fixed and 20. So, I know mine was set to 10 degrees and mine matched up pretty good after I wiggled my distributor around. So you can do this one of two ways. You can either move the distributor and match your 20 here with 20 on the balancer or you can do it the way that uh, Tuner Studio suggests because this same timing setup works whether you have an old school distributor or a 36 tooth wheel or an EDIS setup and you're going to adjust the offset. So basically what you're going to do is <clears throat> if this says 20 but your mark on your balancer says 18 you're going to decrease this number and that should because you're decreasing the offset bring the timing on the balancer up. So if this is 10, you're at eight, 20 here, 18 on the balancer, reduce, reduce this to 8, and they should line up 20 to 20 in a perfect world. Usually it doesn't work out that way. So just play with this number here until, you're, until you match 20 to 20, and you'll get your timing set up right. Now, if this number goes below 0 or above 20, you need to turn your distributor one way or another until you can get them to match up with this between 0 and 20. Um, I'm sure there's a reason why for that. I don't know what it is. I just know it's in the documentation. So, I hope this helps. And while we're here, for those of you um, just starting out, some of your basic setup type things. I'm not sure if I covered this before, uh, but I just realized that I could do this and it's a beautiful tool. Once you have, when you're first starting out, this little incorporate AFR target here, this is going to let you, if you have it set to don't include AFR target, basically your VE table uh, is just adjusted until that RPM and KPA value is the air fuel ratio that you want. Now if you have it to include, everything's based off of this stoic air fuel ratio here. What this means is once you get your VE table tuned, so you have a couple of fuel settings here. You got your air fuel ratio table and your VE table. So once you get your VE table tuned to where they match what your air fuel ratios are in this table and they're tuned like perfect like 
you know, perfect, less a, a 0.1 or less off from each other. All you have to do, if you want to change the amount of fuel going into the motor, is change this air fuel ratio value. So if right here at 2600 RPM and 160 kPa, which is like rough math, um, X number of pounds of boost, maybe eight, I think. Uh, all you have to do is if if this is perfect, my VE table in this point, 26, 160, if this is tuned perfectly, all I have to do to go from 12.1 to let's say now I want to run at that point 12.4, is change that number to 12.4 and boom it automatically adjusts the percentage of fuel based off of the stoic ratio this number over here does not have to change the programming automatically adjusts fuel to where instead of being 12.1 we're gonna run at 12.4 at this value so it's a wonderful tuning tool uh, this is for much later on after you've got your your VE tables really dialed in well and everything's very very close and you decide that instead of uh, wanting an air fuel ratio of super rich like 11.7 or 11.6 in boost you want to run lean and mean at like a 12.1 or a 12.2 all you have to do is change that number right here in the VE table after you're perfectly tuned over here and it automatically adjusts and your new air fuel ratio is going to be whatever you set it to. So, it's a neat little tidbit of information. I should have uh, included it in one of the other uh, tuner videos. Uh, this information, you know, I'm, I'm no guru like some of you expect uh, some of the stuff I kinda learn as I go so hopefully as I learn it I can pass this information along to you guys and uh, I think I'll see if I can't post this wicked sweet gauge cluster I made if you guys like that too alright thank you